What's cracking, big dogs? We got more breaking news. We got more breaking news. The breaking news is bike. We're bike. Headquarters is bike. Channel is bike. My name is Nicholas. This is BDGE. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you want to stay on top of everything nonsense going on in the free agency world of the NFL. We have arguably the most nonsensical move that we've came across thus far. Boom. Former Cardinals running back Kenyon Drake is signing a two-year $11 million deal that includes up to $14.5 million with the Las Vegas Raiders. Josh Jacobs just ain't it. He's just not it for the Raiders. I'm sorry. He just ain't going to be it for your dynasty team. He's not going to be it for your redraft team. For those of y'all that did startups within the last month or so and drafted Josh Jacobs with like a top 20 overall pick, uh, that's on you. He was an easy sell high candidate to begin the offseason season. Just for a few reasons, man. Like the Raiders told us what they were going to do last summer by bringing on Devontae Booker, by re-signing Jalen Rashard. But they're just they're just signing more and more and more pass catchers. And then they go out and sign Kenyon Drake to a near $15 million deal. 11 mil incentives, whatever, whatever, whatever. Now it's a, it's a two-back it's a two back committee. First of all, we have, we have Josh Jacobs, who has had trouble staying on the field to begin with throughout his career. One of my concerns coming out of college was, yes, just because he didn't handle the workload doesn't mean he can't at the NFL level, but we've never seen him do it. So why do we think 130 carry running back at the college level will all of a sudden be able to take the bruises and the, the blood work and the hits of these guys at the NFL level? And I think Josh Jacobs has kind of proven that, you know, he only he only missed one game last year, but he was in and out of games, out of the lineup, and they didn't really have another back to compliment him. They had all these like scat backs and they had these guys that were just catching passes, but not runners, man. And Kenyon Drake offers, I don't think Kenyon Drake is that good of a running back to begin with. He's not someone I'm getting excited about. He's definitely not someone I'm going to be drafting this year in fantasy, but this absolutely kills Josh Jacobs in my opinion, because if we had any hopes or dreams of him being someone that built on that 45 target uh, season from last year, very hard to see that happening now. So I would say Kenyon Drake kind of fills in for whatever the secondary pieces of the backfield were last year, plus probably gets a little bit more work. Try to keep Josh Jacobs a little bit more durable. Try to keep him going through the end of the season. So this is really, really bad news for Josh Jacobs. It's bad news for Kenyon Drake where he could have, you know, hypothetically landed somewhere, maybe like the Falcons or something, where at least he has the shot at the starting role. Remember, they, they took Josh Jacobs in the first round two years ago. So he is still very much the starter there, but he is going to be uh, a volume dependent, like boring floor play in fantasy football this year. Is he a first round pick? Absolutely not. Is he a second round pick? Absolutely not. Is he a third round pick? That's where things get dicey. I would say Josh Jacobs is probably going to be more in the fourth or fifth round range. They're also getting rid of all their fucking offensive linemen at this point in free agency. So I don't know what's going on in Las Vegas. I don't think they know what's going on in Las Vegas, but they want to keep inking these players that, you know, I don't know, these veterans that are not going to move the needle on their offense. Kenyon Drake and eh, John Brown. I like John Brown a little bit, but case in point. Bad news for Josh Jacobs. Bad, bad news. If you could still sell him for anywhere near his name value in Dynasty, do that fucking ASAP. Please do that ASAP. Um, I mean, I, I still see him getting like 15 plus carries a game, maybe two, three targets a game. But like Kenyon Drake's probably going to get double digit touches. OK, this is going to be a full on committee where Josh Jacobs appeal was the three down workhorse and this hopeful pass catching upside that we didn't actually know was going to happen or not. So uh, a lot of projecting when it comes to Josh Jacobs, and I think uh, they honestly did us a favor as fantasy players for people that were thinking about drafting him in the second round. Uh, Kenyon Drake obviously just falls far, 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 far later into drafts. He's more of like, I don't even say the handcuff. He'll have like semi-standalone value, but not enough standalone value where I want to take him in, in the single-digit round. So I won't even really talk about that shit. On the Arizona side of things, I mean, we didn't. I didn't expect Kenyon Drake really to be back in Arizona. I, th I thought there was a chance that it could happen, but they did talk about Chase Edmonds being like the workhorse there. I still think we need to see what they do in the draft. There's a possibility that they take somebody uh, late day two or early day three, even like a, an early fourth round pick, I think would have some competition for Chase Edmonds. You know, if they do go with a guy like Jamar Jefferson, if they take a Travis Etienne in the second round or something like that, I would one, I would be surprised, but um, but that would obviously spell bad news for Chase Edmonds. Otherwise, you know, if they go the fifth, sixth, seventh round pick, I'm I'm gonna feel pretty fucking good about Chase Edmonds. Uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna draft him based on his up. I'm not gonna draft him in drafts where his upside is, right? Like Chase Edmonds, if they take someone just in like the sixth or seventh round, I'm not gonna be drafting Chase Edmonds in like the second round of redraft leagues. Third round is probably even risky given the fact that he's like 200, 205 pounds. Will he hold up for the course of the year? We've never seen him operate and dominate as a three down workhorse for the entirety of thy season. So Chase Edmonds, upside guy, 
still risky in early rounds of the drafts. But if you're like a dynasty owner and you got him right now, you're feeling pretty fucking good that Kenyon Drake is for sure out of the way. They all they also uh, upgraded their offensive line a little, a little bit in the free agency market. So all in all, stonks down for Josh Jacobs, stonks down for Kenyon Drake, stonks up for Chase Edmonds. Still, still like Eno Benjamin there, man. I hope he gets a, I hope he gets a shot. So for those of y'all holding on to Eno Benjamin continue to do so leave him on the taxi squad i know it's a long trip you know you put him in the fucking taxi in new york we're going all the way to california but when you get out at the beach it will be worth it hold on to eno benjamin see what happens in the draft with the cardinals um, at the running back position that's all i got a lot of times when i do these on demand breaking news types videos i always forget like one or two pieces like who it would affect so i'm sure i did that so let me know down below what i fucked up um, otherwise we'll continue to do these breaking news things when Kenny Galladay comes in, when Juju's comes in and all these other, you know, Chris Carson and those guys, I'll do these one-off videos because one, they're great for SEO. It gets me a lot of search engine optimization. People keep flooding into the channel and we get the sub growth up. So make sure you are subbed. If you were not already, make sure you thumbs up the button. Make sure you button, make sure you fuck the thumbs up button. Click it with your dick. I'm sorry. That was unnecessary. Uncalled for. I love you. I gotta go. Goodbye.